Hey, I'm celebrating today, and I've got a special cook. Now, I grew up in Kentucky, fishing, hunting, and watching the Kentucky Wildcats. I've been probably watching them since I was eight years old. And yesterday, I got to go see them live for the first time. It happened to be March Madness. We had front row seats, and the Wildcats won. So I thought, what better way for me to celebrate something that, you know, I guess it, you could say it was on my bucket list, seeing the Wildcats live. We're going to make a venison roast, right? But not just any venison roast. We're going to smoke it, sear it, and then finish it with a red wine and chocolate sauce. I hope you stay with me. Now, the way I'm setting this pit barrel up today, you can see I've just got all the charcoals on one side. Don't have a lot, not a full basket. That's all we're going to need today for this venison roast. All right, let me get it down here in the bottom. Then I've just got three pieces of cherry wood I'm going to put in here. Let's get the bars in and we're going to get the lid on this thing and get it all closed up. So while that pit barrel cooker is heating up, let me show you what we've got here. What I did was I brined this uh, venison roast. If you guys have watched any of my videos, you see I brine chicken, I brine pork chops, pork chops, turkey, any kind of a lean meat. And venison is extremely lean. Now, for this brine, uh, I, I made it up last night. Two quarts of water, um, one cup of apple cider vinegar. You can see I put in, I think that's three bay leaves. Um, what this is, is I had some fresh basil growing, so I threw some of that in there. I have a half a cup of kosher salt, uh, about a tablespoon of peppercorns, um, and I had a half of a cup of brown sugar, and then I put in about a tablespoon of mustard seed. Now you will get some flavor from a brine, but more importantly is to make sure it doesn't dry out during the cook. Now it's trimmed up pretty good, right? Now I bought this at a store by the way. I wish I uh, would have uh, harvested it myself, but I didn't. People talk about gamey, you know, it tastes gamey. It doesn't if it's prepared right and if it's clean right. This silver skin will definitely give it, you know, contributes to a gamey taste. And I did get another knife here because I think this one's going to be a little bit too big. But you just want to trim this off, okay? And by the way, uh, one thing I failed to mention in the brine is I did put two tablespoons of Worcestershire sauce. That's why you see it's a little bit uh, kind of brownish color instead of what you usually see red. And by the way, this roast is not that big. It's about, uh, I think the label said 1.1 pounds. Um, we have a wild uh, butcher here in town and they, they uh, sell wild game. Uh, I believe this is one of those New Zealand deer roast. Anyway, so let me just get this silver skin cut off and then I'll show you how we're going to season it. Now, there's our venison roast. Now, like I said, it's been uh, brining in a salt. So if you're worried, you know, a lot of people are worried about salt flavor. I mean, for me personally, I can't get enough salt. But anyway, all you got to do is just kind of wipe it off. You don't need to take it in your sink and rinse it off. This will work just fine. Okay, let me just get that last little piece right there off. Right, so for my binder, I'm just going to use a little Worcestershire what's this here sauce. Okay, and, uh, and you could use olive oil if you wanted or, you know, mustard if you wanted. And then for my seasoning, I'm going to use this holy cow from Meat Church. Use whatever you want, but I would recommend you do not use a sugar based rub uh, like a you know like a rib rub or a pulled pork you know boston butt this doesn't have any sugar in it venison at least i'm just giving you my opinion doesn't go well with sweet um, so that's why i chose this um, like i say use your favorite but but again i wouldn't use um, a sugar base like a barbecue rub and you can see this is kind of coarse. It's going to give us a nice crust on the outside, I think. 
And that's all we're gonna do to prepare it, right? Because we're gonna make this wine and chocolate sauce to go with it. My pit barrel is running around 270 degrees, okay? We're gonna get that venison roast on here. Oh yeah. And I want to get a temp probe in it. Okay. Let's get this guy in here. We're going to get the lid on it. That'll come up to about 109, 110 degrees. To start this sauce, I've got it's about three, three and a half tablespoons of butter. Anywhere between three and four is going to be just fine. Okay. Got this pan on medium heat, all right? Just gonna melt this butter down. Okay, we got our butter melted down. Now I've got two shallots diced up. All right, I don't know how you measure shallots. Probably two medium size. They weren't super large, but they weren't small either. Okay. Got a teaspoon of garlic, minced garlic and a teaspoon of black pepper. Okay, let me get that in. Okay, get it all stirred up. Now the next ingredient's optional. Got some cayenne pepper, hope you can see that. We're gonna put about, and you know, don't use your hands because you're probably not accustomed to holding the pepper like I am. And you know, you'll probably touch your eyes and then blame me, so don't do that. That was probably a teaspoon, maybe a teaspoon and a half. Okay, I wouldn't worry about it being too spicy, but if you are, just leave that out. Okay, I just want these shallots to soften up. You'll be able to tell when they soften up. That's what they look like so far. We need to cook them just a couple more minutes. Probably the total cook time is going to be four to five minutes over medium heat. So our shallots are softened up. It's been about four minutes. I got two cups of red wine. I'm using a Cabernet. Okay. And we're going to bring this up to a simmer. I'm going to turn this heat up just a little till I get it to a simmer and then I'll back it back down. And we're going to cook, you'll see almost all of this wine off. So for those of you that are worried about the alcohol, um, it should cook off, but I can't promise you that. <laughs> anyway, uh, we're going to reduce it down and uh, we'll be right back. You can see our wine sauce is reduced down to just see it's almost like a gravy. Okay. Now we're going to add in the beef broth. All right. Now I'm going to reduce it down again by at least half. It's been 55 minutes and my venison roast is 118 degrees. I decided to let it go on up just a little bit more. Had to change out my probe. The other probe wasn't reading correctly. Okay, now we're going to take this guy off of here now. All right. And I'm going to wrap it up in some foil and let it rest here. while we finish making this red wine sauce. And then I'll show you how I'm gonna finish this venison roast. All right, our sauce is reduced down about half again. Sorry, I got a little piece of paper on that butter. I'm putting two more tablespoons of butter in here. All right. Yep. I say you can't have too much butter, just like you can't have too much bacon. Then I've got a quarter cup of dark chocolate chips, okay? Now I just wanna get this melted down. You don't wanna cook this chocolate too hot, trust me. I used to own a chocolate company where we made chocolate, you get it too hot, it's ruined. In fact, I'm gonna turn the heat off. Just let this get all blended in. We've got that chocolate blended in, we've got that butter all melted. Now what we're gonna do is strain this. This has got a little strainer here in a bowl. Oh yeah, this smells incredible.
Okay. Just want to kind of push it down, get all your good sauce out. And then let me show you how we're going to finish this recipe up. All right, let's finish this venison up. What I've got here is some duck fat. Okay. I don't know. One. That's a big ass table. That's a big tablespoon. Two. I'm going to put all this in here, what I got left. It was probably about three to four ounces. Okay. Look, you could also use grapeseed oil if you want. I've been digging this duck fat. Puts a nice crusty skin, uh, you know, crusty skin on the outside. High smoke point. We've got our duck fat heated up. There's a beautiful venison roast. I'm gonna put it in here. We're gonna sear each side, pull it off, put it together with this sauce. I hope you stay with me. It's probably been about one minute. Ah, oh, yeah, we could even let it go a little longer. That's okay. I'm gonna let it go another minute on this side. It smells so good. Okay, it's probably been about a minute each side. We're going to get it out of this oil. Oh, yeah. I'm going to let it rest now for a minute. Get this out of the way. Let's come back in about 10 minutes. All right, our venison roast has been resting here about 10, 15 minutes. We're going to cut this guy up, okay? Just going to cut a few slices. I want you to look at this beautiful knife that uh, Pit Barrel folks uh, sent me out. It's just absolutely gorgeous. Okay, let's just keep on cutting her here. It gets towards the middle. Looks like she's cooked about medium. Which surprised me because my temp probe was only temp in 125. I don't know, some folks will say that's medium rare. Let me get it spread out and we'll have a look. Let me cut another piece off here. Seems to be pretty daggone tender. Now I'm going to take some of that red wine, chocolate sauce, drizzle it down here. Okay. Oh yeah. Then what I've got here, just a little bit chopped finely parsley. You ready to give this a try? I know I sure am. Okay, I'm just gonna cut up a little bit of this, bite size. Look how tender it is. Look at that. No fat in the venison roast. Look how tender. Okay. Just give it a try. Let me get this big fork. For all you people that say uh, venison tastes gamey, you haven't had it cooked right. Oh my gosh. Mm. Tender, just full of flavor. You get that pepper that we put in there. Mm. The wine gives it a richness. If you've seen any of my videos where I cook with wine, I usually say that same thing. That's the only way I know how to describe it. It's just this deep, rich flavor. I mean, it's tender. There's no gaminess whatsoever. And I'm sure you want to know about the chocolate. The chocolate is very, very subtle. Definitely not sweet. You know, for those of you that eat candy bars and stuff, you know, I eat candy bars. It's not sweet at all. You get the flavor, a subtle chocolate flavor without that sweetness on the very, very back end. I gotta tell you, one of the best venison roasts I've ever made. If you like this recipe, I hope you subscribe. I hope you leave a comment. Give us a thumbs up, right? It really helps us on our channel. Thanks for watching.